up guys, it's your pal Ben here from Twig Cycles in Hagerstown, Maryland, and I am beyond thrilled to finally be sitting in one of the brand new 2023 six passenger Honda Pioneer 1000 Deluxe models. Um, right off the bat, I wanna share my thoughts. I am beyond impressed with how well they executed this, what is fa a fairly new model for Honda. High standard of quality. This thing is incredibly smooth. All six gears shift incredibly well. Um, the sharp turning radius is another thing. Whenever I first found out that they were going to release this machine, I wanted to see how sharp the turning radius was actually going to be because obviously with such a large crew, six passenger machine, um, it already feels like you're kind of driving a limousine. It's a, it's a longer machine. Um, so obviously if you do end up taking this trail riding, you want something that can actually maneuver the trails. Even though this is not a dedicated trail machine, you want something that can still maneuver, get in and out of you know, the fields, the trees, uh, maybe in and out of the barn if you're using it for, you know, farm use and stuff like that. But uh, this is just an extremely well executed six passenger uh, crew model from Honda. I'm, I'm beyond thrilled uh, so far. I'm at five stars on this thing. Um, again, beyond thrilled. So let's jump in here and, and check it out. All right, guys, jumping right into it. We have obviously the new 2023 Pioneer 1006 passenger deluxe. Um, 2023 brought us a whole new face to the Honda Pioneer 1000. So we have a new uh, redesigned front end on these. It's sporty, it's sharp looking, it's a new facelift. It's just something new, uh, which I think Honda executed very, very well. Obviously right up front and center, you go ahead and get the front steel brush guard from Honda, which is wonderful. I believe, uh, in my opinion, my humble opinion, if we're going to be purchasing a utility side-by-side, -side, it should at least come standard with some sort of front-end protection, and this machine does. Obviously, you can see right behind that front brush guard is your radiator because this is a liquid-cooled parallel twin 1000cc fuel-injected motor. So obviously, items like your plows, your winches, and stuff like that are going to integrate with this factory bumper. Uh, Honda does have some expanded uh, bumper options available that kind of go up and, and cover up your headlights in the front, you know, more of your plastic and, and bodywork and, and things of that nature. But uh, this is just, I think, obviously common knowledge. If you're gonna be getting a utility side by side, it should at least come with some sort of front end protection just like this does. As far as windshield and roof options, there is a ton of options available for these things. There's roofs, there's windshields, um, poly, soft, canvas, hard, whatever. Um, I would at least like to see the Deluxe come with a roof, but I'm not gonna complain a whole lot because then it leaves you kind of a clean canvas to pick and choose what style roof and what style windshield you wanna get for it. So that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop into the cab because I know this is one thing that everybody's really excited to see. Um, so we have obviously uh, this, if you've ever sat in a Pontiac or 1000, uh, just a single bench seat, the three passenger, everything up here pretty much remains the same. So same rules apply. If we go ahead and hop here in the back seat, we'll get the gimbal out of the way here. <clears throat> so if we hop in the back seat, you have a ton of leg room. Literally, this has so much room inside. Um, now I will say... So I am six foot two, sitting right around 230 pounds. You can see my knees are not hitting anything. Um, you literally have, I don't know, probably six, seven inches worth of room between your knees and uh, the front bench seat. So you have plenty of space um, for three people back here. You can see we've got my footprints up there. Um, but yeah, this has, especially if you're the middle passenger over here, there's even more space. Um, you know, there's even all this foot room up here, so that's pretty cool. Tons of leg room. Uh, this is actually really impressive. I didn't even know this, this little cup was here. That is really, really nice. So if you're super tall, <laughs> you can kind of stretch your legs out there a little bit. Uh, but my goodness, this thing is just very well executed. I'll honestly have to wait until we get a Ranger 1000 in from Polaris and just kind of compare cabin space. Um, I'm I'm almost willing to bet this actually has more cabin space than what the, the Ranger does. Don't hold me to it. Uh, we haven't had a Ranger 1000 crew in here uh, at Twigs for a while, um, but I'm, I'm willing to put money on it. This actually has more space inside the cabin than what the Ranger does. That is phenomenal. I'm gonna go ahead and jump back up here to uh, the cockpit um, obviously three passengers up front three passengers here in the back um, if we're working our way over here to the left hand side we've got one cup holder there's another cup holder over to the right uh, as far as cup holders back here for your rear passengers um, we have them in the door so there's one in each door there for you so that's pretty cool working our way up here um, now they did not change this which I understand um, this actually has a ton of room 
it for your legs and stuff if you're a taller rider. Um, if you're shorter, again, fixed seating, so this does not have any adjustable seating. However, you do have a nice adjustable steering wheel, which is pretty cool. So there's all the way up, is all the way down. So just to kind of give you an idea what that looks like with the steering wheel all the way down. Honestly, I think just about any height rider can probably operate this machine uh, without any trouble. So now that I've turned the key on, you can see we have all the necessities, everything you'd ever possibly need to know. You get obviously a gear indicator up here on the top hand right. Get your hour meter right there. Speedo, tachometer right there. Get your time here at the bottom left. Two wheel drive, four wheel drive, differential lock indicator. And then of course your fuel gauge is right there. Uh, the only reason these lights are on is because I don't have the machine running. If you see, I'll go ahead and fire the machine up and you can see they'll go away. Um, as far as cabin noise right now, uh, this is obviously open right now. I don't have any cab systems on it right now or anything like that. Um, but if it's not noisy, it's a Honda, it's quiet, it's very refined. Um, this is probably one of the nicer, more refined side by sides you can, you can find. Um, it's that Honda quality, you know, there's a lot of things that I think Polaris does a good job at paying attention to. There's a lot of things that I think Honda and Kawasaki and some of the others and Yamaha pay attention to one more than the other. Um, but as far as this machine being quiet, uh, it is quiet in decibel level. Obviously we don't have a cab system on to really compare it, how noisy it would be if we had a roof and windshield and windows and doors and stuff like that. But, uh, it's quiet. It's quiet enough, I think. Okay, so uh, down below here, uh, before I forget, we do have some storage. So we have some netted storage in there, which is pretty neat. Um, you have a switch panel here. So if you want to throw some lights on, uh, LED lights, auxiliary lights for the back, bed lighting and stuff like that, you have the switch panel there for that. Working our way up here, you have off, low beam, and high beam on your headlights there. Well, this thing even has a tow and a haul uh, mode, which is pretty impressive. And then, of course, your transmission. As you know, this has the DCT. This has the automatic transmission uh, from Honda. So you have automatic transmission or you have manual transmission. So as you can see, we have two wheel drive, four wheel drive, oh, turf modes over here, and then four wheel drive and differential lock. So four wheel drive with differential lock, which I think is really cool. Uh, a machine of this stature, you should definitely have the choice of whether you want turf mode, two wheel drive, four wheel drive, or differential lock. Obviously differential lock meaning all four wheels are spinning simultaneously, uh, which is important. Obviously a machine of this stature is very capable in hauling and towing and doing many different things. Uh, sometimes you need a little bit of added traction, whether it be in icy or snowy conditions or muddy or rain or what have you. Obviously also if you're towing something, having that added traction is gonna be helpful as well. And over to the far right side, we have our glove box. Um, I'd say decent amount of space for what's expected. It's appropriate, you know. One thing that I always really, really liked about the five passenger or the three passenger Honda Pioneer 1000 was the fact that your dump bed lever, which is right there now, went all the way up here. So potentially if you had mulch or stone or rock or anything, as the driver, you could essentially kind of back up or reverse it right to your spot and then pull that lever and then dump your rocks or whatever junk you have back here you can kind of dump it in whatever spot without having to get out of the machine um obviously you'd have to get out and and you know push the dump bed down anyway but that's just me being super picky i would have liked to been able to you know sit up in the passenger seat or the driver's seat and been able to uh you know dump the dump bed from where you're sitting but not a big deal but now in terms of engine uh capability things of that nature this obviously is a parallel twin 1000 uh, cc fuel injected liquid cooled motor from honda we've we've come to know this engine it's been around for quite some time now uh this is capable of towing 2500 pounds uh, worth so you have 2,500 pounds worth of towing capacity, 1,000 pound, 1,000 pound bed capacity. Uh, this machine is weighing in right at a uh, little over 1,900 pounds overall. Uh, so it's a little over 1,900 pounds. Uh, you get a little bit over 12 inches worth of ground clearance. And I'm going to walk around here and I just want to show you uh, one of the things I like about this is that your ground clearance is constant. Uh, so it doesn't really have much of a slope. So if you look. Um, it's truly constant. It, it appears to be, which we'll measure here in a minute, uh, you're a little over 12 inches worth of ground clearance. According to Honda, it's 12.6 inches worth of ground clearance from the front to the rear. There's nothing crazy hanging down. The machine doesn't slope forward or backward or anything like that. Um, so yeah, a little over 12 inches worth of ground clearance, which remains constant. We work our way up here to the front. You can really see this thing 
has a ton of ground clearance for a crew model. This is wonderful. I love this. This is just uh, really kind of proven itself to be a very capable machine. I know these aren't dedicated trail machines. Uh, this is definitely more of a uh, recreation utility type side by side. But if you wanted to take this off road, you definitely could. It's got the ground clearance and the stance and the suspension. It's very capable. And of course, like I say, that to uh, turning radius, uh, which is actually coming at 18.7 feet. Uh, so it's 18.7 feet uh, is what their turning radius is. According to Han is what they're saying. I went ahead and grabbed the tape measure here. I'm gonna actually show you just how much ground clearance this thing actually has. So I'm holding here at the front lip, uh, basically kind of the rear end of the, the wheel well here on the front. You can see, uh, yeah, we're at 14 inches worth of ground clearance. And of course, again, as you can see, that remains constant. Uh, you can see I'm, I'm right at uh, 14 inches worth of ground clearance there. And uh, there's nothing really underneath the belly of the machine that's going to obstruct that. Uh, so that's pretty cool. We're going to work our way here to the back. Uh, now, actually, if you look, you can see kind of part of our, our frame does kind of obstruct that a little bit. So maybe if uh, I'd say you're probably more likely around that 12 and a half uh, to 13 inch ground clearance there in the back. Um, right now, like I say, if I hold it up here to this lip, we're at uh, about 15 inches. So ideally, yeah, you're probably right in that 13 range for uh, uh, ground clearance here on the back. I get this question a lot. How tall are these machines exactly? So I'm gonna stand here kind of just, this is at the front portion of the frame to give you an idea. So we'll straighten that up. I'm gonna stand here at the, at the front most portion of the frame. And you can see we're kind of right at that 75, uh, 74 and a half inches tall on the front. Working our way back here to the rear end of the machine. And we're sitting at 76 inches. We'll round up just a little bit. Actually, it's almost right on the spot, about 76 inches tall in the rear end. Uh, as far as overall machine length from front most portion to the rear most being the rear bumper here, uh, or the tailgate, it's 152.2 inches long and you're 63 inches wide. And I'll run around here to the front. You can see we're 63 inches wide, which is right along with most of the crew sized utility machines. But again, just gonna kind of wrap things up here a little bit. Again, this is a very well executed crew model machine from Honda. Uh, I'm very, very impressed with this. This has a very sharp turning radius. I keep saying that because I know obviously with longer machines, depending on where you're operating the machine, you want it to be able to go in and out of maybe trees if you're trail riding, uh, in and out of the barn. Uh, depending on the scenario, you want it to be able to be uh, maneuverable and not feel like you're operating a limousine or anything of that nature. Um, as far as cabin space, they did a great job there. There's a ton of space, both up front and in the back here. There's a ton of space for all six passengers. Um, this by far, aside from the Kawasaki Pro FXT, which is also a six passenger side by side, this is one of their utilities from Kawasaki. Um, this, aside from the Pro FXT, probably has some of the most internal cabin space out of a side by side that I've ever, ever seen. Uh, so just a very well executed six passenger utility unit from Honda. Uh, obviously same standard of quality, very high standard of quality from Honda. They did a great job. It obviously shifts through all six gears, uh, incredibly smooth. Uh, it's very quiet. It's a very, uh, low decibel parallel twin 1000, five stars for Honda. Um, I really have nothing to complain about. One last time, very well executed five stars for Honda. Parallel Twin 1000, fuel injected, liquid cooled. We got well over, well over 12 inches worth of ground clearance. It's a 2,500 pound towing capacity, 1,000 pound bed capacity, 63 inches wide. It's 152 inches long. Uh, you're sitting at topmost region. You're at, uh, what did I say, 76 inches tall. Um, this is just a great overall unit. I'm, I'm quite thoroughly impressed, guys. So. Uh, hopefully you found this review or walk around uh, informative. Don't worry, I'm not in the middle of a road here. This is actually a closed road uh, right now anyway. Um, but uh, if you guys have any questions on this brand new model from Honda, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, I try to cover some of the basics in these videos. I don't get through all the aspects and, and some things what, what I know folks would, would like me to uh, get to uh, or point out. But if you have any questions, Give me a call, 301-739-2773, or leave your questions in the comment section below. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Please help me out, and I'll help you guys out. Thank you. Mm -hmm.